Hey, what's up guys and welcome to another episode of SolidWorks Tutorials with Too Tall Toby, where today we're gonna try and take a look at this sheet metal lifter. This part's called 230108-SM lifter and it comes from the library of parts that I regularly post as challenge models or practice models. If you haven't had a chance to try this part out yet, maybe you wanna pause this video and take a look over at my practice models playlist. You can give this one a try, but uh, I'm gonna get into it and let you know what a SolidWorks expert thinks about this challenge. Ow! So before we get started with today's tutorial, I just wanna take a moment and thank the sponsor of this tutorial, SolidBox. SolidBox specializes in providing computer hardware for CAD and CAM specialists. So if you ever find yourself in a spot where you need a super reliable computer and you wanna partner up with a company who's gonna absolutely take care of you for the long run, be sure to check out mysolidbox.com and they will help you specify the exact computer that you need for your CAD or CAM needs. Thank you, SolidBox, and let's get into it with today's challenge, this sheet metal lifter. Now, this is a sheet metal part, so I know I'm gonna be using the sheet metal functionality. It's got a default wall thickness of three millimeters, a default bend radius of three millimeters, and the material is plain carbon steel. I think it's always good before you get started with a challenge like this to just look over the model and kind of come up with a basic game plan. And I think in the case of this model, what I'm really paying attention to is the centerline symmetry in this model. So it's really symmetric in two directions. And since this is gonna be a sheet metal, I kind of get into the mindset of doing a thin feature. I think my first sketch is gonna look something like this. I'm gonna create a line that comes over 80 millimeters. So the 160 over two, I'm gonna create a line that goes up 60 millimeters and then I'm gonna bring that out to this dimension the 60 millimeter depth midplane and that's gonna kind of give me the very first feature of this model so now that I have a game plan let's get into it and see what that first feature looks like I'm gonna go new I'm gonna choose my template for plain carbon steel I'm gonna go to the front plane begin a sketch orient my view and I'm gonna create a line that comes across horizontally I'll make this uh, 160 over 2 and I'll create a line that goes vertical here. This is gonna go up to a height of 60. And once I've got that geometry in place, I'm ready to jump into my sheet metal command for base flange slash tab. Now, the first thing I wanna do is go down here to my sheet metal wall thickness, make sure that my wall thickness is three, that my radius is three. I'm just using the tab key on my keyboard to navigate through that part of the menu. I'm also gonna specify that I want the uh, depth of this extrusion to be 60 millimeters, and then I'm gonna right mouse button in the background and I'm gonna choose mid plane for that extrusion end condition. Now the final thing that I'm gonna do is just get into a normal two view and just take a look and make sure everything looks as expected. Uh, so compared to the drawing, I think this looks good. If it didn't look good, I might go in here to the sheet metal parameters and choose reverse direction to put the material on the outside of that thin feature that I sketched. But I think this looks good like this, so I'm gonna hit the green check mark and take a look at the results. Yes, that looks pretty darn good. Now, for my second feature, I'm gonna need to kind of round off this tombstone shape. And I can either do that with one single full round fillet, or I could do it with two individual uh, 30 millimeter radius fillets. I think I'll just do it with the two fillets. So I'll go into my S key, jump into the fillet command, and I will begin a fillet here with a radius of 30 millimeters. And then I'll pick this edge here and this edge here. I'll right mouse button to finish that command and Yes, this part is coming together. It's looking pretty good. So I think the next feature that I'll create will be this little tab that's sticking down here off of the side of the part, this little tab coming down here. And I think that the main thing that I wanna notice as far as location goes is that it's coming down 20 millimeters. So we've got this 20 millimeters. It's coming from the center line at 45 millimeters or one half of that 90 millimeters. And it looks like it's starting right where this fillet radius here kind of ends. So it's starting, I guess you could say six millimeters off from this edge of the model, three millimeters wall thickness and three millimeters worth of inside bend radius. So now that I know where that thing is located, I think I'm ready to go back into SolidWorks. I'm gonna pick this edge here, just single click on that edge, and then I'm gonna go to the edge flange command. And once I go into the edge flange command, I'm gonna be looking for things like 
where is the flange being created? Is it sticking all the way out of the part here, like kind of popping out of the side of the part, or is it flush with the existing material in the part? These are things that you can control here in the flange property manager. In this case, I'm down in what's called flange position. So is it uh, material kind of inside of the material flush to the outside? Is it outside of the material flush to the outside? Or does the bend begin at the outside of the existing material? Well, if I look at this part in the drawing here from the side view, I can see that it should be that last option. The bend should begin right outside of the existing material. So I'm gonna use that option, but that's very important when you're working in sheet metal to get used to the examination of that flange position functionality. So the bend is going to the outside and then we get into this option here, this flange length, and I'm gonna make that 20. So, you know, the, the dimension on the print was 20. I'll make that 20 there. But it's always good when you're working with edge flanges and when you're working with dimensions from your drawing to get in here and look at the actual edit flange profile functionality. This is gonna let you edit that sketch and take a look at what that dimension actually is. And so in this case, we can see that the 20 dimension is coming from the bottom of the material and then going down to the bottom of the part. So let's see what that dimension is in our actual sketch here. So I'm gonna go smart dimension from here down to here and look, oh, it's only 17. It's not 20, which it's supposed to be. And that's because, you know, that dimension that was in the property manager is actually coming from the top of the material. So that could have been a costly mistake if I wouldn't have caught that. So it's always good to go into that edit flange profile and just double check to make sure that, you know, the dimension you're getting from the print is being aligned the same way as the dimension you've got in your model. Now we've got our 20 nice and lined up where before our 20 was coming from up here. So our parts would have been three millimeters short. No good. The other thing that we want to do when we go into that edit sketch mode is we want to change the location of this vertical edge here. So I'm just going to right mouse button, choose select, and then I'll grab that edge and drag it over. And uh, that dimension is supposed to be 90 across the center line. So we've got this 90 millimeters across the center line here. Well, a little trick that I showed in another one of my videos, the video on the doubled dimensions, is if I know I'm going to be creating mirror geometry in my model, I'll go and I'll create a center line and then I'll dimension to that center center line and I'll cross over the center line and then I'll make that 90. And that way, when I go to make a drawing, that dimension will be on there as 90 in the drawing, which is pretty useful. Also, just kind of a good quick way to check your design intent when we're looking at this final model. We're not gonna see a 45 there. You know, if we double click on this feature, we look at it from the front, we're gonna see a 90 going over to the mirrored flange. Very, very useful. It looks like there's a couple of nine millimeter radius on this flange here. So I'll create a radius here and a radius here. And that radius value is gonna be nine, enter, enter to finish that command. Good shortcuts to remember, covered these in some of my uh, end condition and uh, right mouse button shortcut videos. And we're going to take that flange and we're gonna mirror it. So a lot of times I will pre-select the flange and the fillet feature. And then I'll go up here to the plane that I wanna mirror about as well. And I'll hold control. So I pick all three of those by holding control. And that way, as soon as I jump into the mirror command, it's almost like SolidWorks just knows everything that I wanna do. And I'll just write mouse button and choose okay. Cool, this is looking pretty good. So the final feature that we need to create, probably the most tricky feature on the model, is going to be this region here. And I think that it's fair to say that this region is going to begin with a cut extrude. So that's probably a, a good way to start when you've got a, a weird set of geometry that's kind of down in a pocket. It depends on how it's defined, but I think a lot of times it's good just to start with a cut extrude just to kind of clear out that region. So we've got some dimensions here, 30 millimeters. We've got a dimension here, 20 millimeters from the end. So pretty much just a rectangle that's centered on the origin. We'll get in here, we'll create a rectangle like so. We'll say that it's gonna be 30. We don't really know what that dimension is gonna be, so I'll just make it 60, and then I'll hit escape. I'll click on that dimension. I'll grab the dimension grip handle, drag it over to this end of the part. Oh, nice, I guessed correctly. It is 60, so that gives us 20 there, perfect. Uh, so, and then I'll center this rectangle on the origin, and there we go. Now I'm ready to go into a cut extrude command, and whenever you're working in sheet metal, it's usually a good idea to use this option here for link to thickness. You can link the cut extrude to have the same uh, depth value as the wall thickness of the sheet metal. That way, if the, the sheet metal ever gets thicker, the uh, cut extrude will always be going through that wall. So I think that's a pretty good start for our geometry here. That gave us the creation of this kind of pocket shape. 
Now, for this next feature, we could do it in a couple of ways. We could do it with a series of edge flanges, or we could do it with what's called a jog. And the jog command in SolidWorks is very useful to create this shape here that kind of comes down at an angle and then goes flat again. So that's the feature that I'm gonna use. I think that feature will work out great. But there are a few different ways to skin the cat in this case. Uh, there's a few different ways to create this feature. And so, you know, I'll leave it up to you which one you wanna use. But I think using jog is a, a perfect way to do this and it's a great opportunity to use that command. So let's get in here, let's create this geometry, and, and I'm just gonna start out by creating the geometry here, looking exactly the way it looks when we're looking straight down on the top. And when we get into the jog command, you'll see why I'm able to get away, get away with that. And so we're gonna create these two holes here, these two tombstones that are 50 millimeters apart across the center line. We're gonna create these so that they have a two millimeter gap on each side, so a two millimeter gap, a two millimeter gap on each side. So we'll go here to this face, begin a sketch, orient our view, S key line, create a line that comes over like so, come back and hold our mouse over that endpoint, switch into the line arc line shortcut, another good video in our power move series. We'll close that thing off like so, we'll S key and jump into the smart dimension command, we'll make that two millimeters, we'll make this one here two millimeters, and we'll finish off here by doing what we did a few moments ago, creating a vertical center line and then creating a dimension that goes from this arc to the vertical center center line and then crossing over with a value of 50 millimeters. Now, at this point, we're going to take advantage of the very first command that we used in this in this uh, feature process, in the sheet metal process, the sheet metal command for base flange slash tab. Now, instead of creating a base flange, this command is going to create a tab, which is just taking that uh, sketch that we created and extruding it to the same depth as the existing sheet metal and merging it to the existing sheet metal. That's how tab works when you're working with sheet metal designs. So this is awesome. So far, so good. Now we need to de determine what the location is of the beginning of this jog. And it looks like that location is called out here in this detail view, 30 millimeters from the edge of the part over to the beginning of the bend. And then after that, it begins to bend down. So 30 millimeters to that location. So I'm gonna select this face here, begin a sketch, orient my view, and I'm gonna create a line that goes from here to here. Whoops, I almost got the midpoint. Glad that I didn't. We want that line to be able to move because we're gonna put a dimension on that line that goes from the end of the part to this line with a distance of 30. That is going to become the bend location for our jog. So now we're gonna use a very cool command that exists in SolidWorks. The command is known as jog. We go here to sheet metal. It's right here on the sheet metal toolbar, jog. We click the jog command and we pick this face here as our fixed face. Now it does matter which side of the line you choose. You notice if I, if I click again to unselect and then click over here, I get a different result. So make sure you pick on the correct side of the line. That's going to be the side of the line that has the material that you want to retain its current position. So I click here on this side of the line that initiates the jog command. And at this point, what I like to do is get a view where I'm looking kind of dead on, kind of the same view as this uh, side view is being created from. That way I can make sure that that bend is beginning right here, right at that 30 millimeters. So we come over here, we look at this thing, we look at how it's bending. Uh, it looks to me like the bend is going in the wrong direction. It's going up rather than down. So let me flip the direction of that bend. I'll do a little reverse direction here. Uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the jog location. So here what I can do is I can click in the background and I can press the arrow key on my keyboard just to kind of rotate the view a little bit. And that way I can see this line, the line that I sketched earlier in this, uh, in this process. So here's where that line is. Here's where the bend looks like it's beginning. Uh, they are not lined up with one another. You can see that you know there's a gap here from, from that line to there. So that's not what we want. So we're going to adjust this bend location. So that's not right either. That's not right either. Oh yeah, that's what we wanted. That is perfect. So once again, this jog location, jog position, flange location, this stuff is all very important when you start working with sheet metal. Let's return to our front view here. And when we get into our front view, we can also look at what's called the uh, the jog offset. So I could type in a value for that. I could type in like maybe 20 millimeters. Here's another cool bonus shortcut. If you hold the control key on your keyboard and you hold the, the wheel, the middle mouse button on your mouse, that puts you into a pan command. Well, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll kind of pan until I'm at the very bottom of the screen just to see if two entities are in fact collinear. So I just move both of these horizontal entities down this entity 
here and this entity here. And it's just kind of like a quick visual check to see if those two entities are in fact collinear. And in this case they are, and so I could probably, you know, just end the command at that point. But I think the more appropriate way to do this is to change the jog offset to up to surface and then to choose this surface here. And that way I'm confident that if the length of these little tabs here changes, the length of the jog is gonna change as well, or the location of the jog is gonna change as well. Now we need to look at this final option here, which is the option for fixed projected length. What does that option do exactly? Well, what it does is it lets us say that this material here is the existing material in the flat, and therefore it's gonna need to shift over in, in this direction as it is bent, or we could say we just wanna take this, this uh, geometry and project it straight down. So it's, uh, it's two different options depending on if you're designing in the flat and you know what the flat looks like and then you wanna um, have the material pull back as it goes around that bend, or if you're designing in a kind of virtual environment and you just wanna take that design and, and project it straight down, which is what we're getting currently. If I use the other option, you can see that the preview updates and that, that flange length gets a little bit shorter. And the reason for that is because it's, it's running down that ramp and then coming over. It's running down that, that angled ramp for the jog and then it's coming over. And so if I was to change the angle of that jog, you can see that the, the location down here at the, the bottom of the screen, this location down here, you know, it changes. Uh, as I adjust that angle, it's changing because it needs to cover more distance or it needs to cover less distance before it gets down to that, that final bend region. We're just taking this existing geometry as though it's a flat and then we're bending it twice. Well, if we use this option here, fixed projected length, then the center of that circle always remains 25 millimeters from the center of the part, regardless of what the angle is or regardless of what the length of the flange is because it's just taking that geometry as I sketched it and projecting it straight down. So pretty cool little uh, uh, adjustment that you can make there in the uh, projected length. We're gonna set our angle here to 60 degrees because that's what the print has, 60 degrees. And we're gonna hit the green check mark and boom, that creates our jog. I think that jog looks awesome. We could once again do this little check here and make sure that it is in fact uh, collinear at the bottom there. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And so I think that that just leaves us with our final couple of cut extrudes. So we've got a cut extrude here at 10 millimeters and we've got a cut extrude looking in from the end here at 30 millimeters. So let's add both of those. Select a face, begin a sketch, orient the view. We'll wake up that center point and we'll make that a 30 degree or 30 millimeter uh, diameter cut, S key extrude, and we'll do link to thickness there. That looks good. And this one down here, we will select this face, S key, wake up the center point, create a circle there. That circle is going to have a diameter of 10 millimeters, S key extrude cut, link to thickness. We hit the green check mark and we'll finish this thing off by doing a features mirror. We'll pick this face here as the mirror face and we'll say bodies to mirror and just click anywhere on the sheet metal to do a full full mirror, a mirror all command, and that gives us our sheet metal part. I think that looks pretty good compared to the drawing. Looks like the correct answer here is 370 grams plus or minus two grams. Let's go into evaluate, let's go into mass properties and Boom, 370.16, so we are well within tolerance. We did it correctly, and uh, that is how I would approach that model. Of course, there are a couple of other ways you could approach this model, particularly in this region here. We could do this with an edge flange at 60 degrees and then another edge flange at 60 degrees. We could even do it with a miter flange. We could sweep a miter flange along this edge. So there's a couple of other ways that you could do that. I'll let you guys experiment with those other ways, but let me know down in the comments below what you thought about this solution and of course if you enjoyed this video be sure to like be sure to subscribe be sure to share this video with some other users out there who are trying to learn SolidWorks the goal of this entire channel is to help people learn SolidWorks and to help you save time by learning some cool time saving tips and tricks so I hope you learned some during this video let me know if you did and I will see everyone in the next one